Welcome, dear friends, to Set Apart for Purpose. Whether you're a familiar face or a new visitor, we're so glad to have you join us today. Our exploration delves into a profound and sobering account from the Bible, the fall of Eli's household. The scriptures offer timeless wisdom, and today, we're turning our attention to 1 Samuel chapters 2 and 3. This narrative holds a message so potent, so crucial, that it reverberates through the ages, speaking directly to our lives today. This isn't just an ancient story, it's a living word for us. Eli, a priest serving in God's presence, occupied a position of immense spiritual authority. One would expect his household to reflect the holiness and reverence befitting his calling. Yet, as we journey through this narrative, we uncover a tragic tale of unchecked sin and its devastating consequences. Eli's sons, Hophni and Phinehas, far from embracing their father's legacy, chose a path of wickedness and corruption. Their actions brought disgrace upon the priesthood and more significantly, dishonored God. This begs us to ask a heart-wrenching question. Why did God, in his infinite wisdom, allow such a tragedy to befall Eli and his family? The book of 1 Samuel paints a stark picture of the depravity that had infiltrated Eli's family. His sons, Hophni and Phinehas, are described as worthless men who did not know the Lord. Their sin was not merely a matter of youthful indiscretion. It was a blatant disregard for God's laws and a deep-seated rebellion against his authority. Their rebellion against God's law had dire consequences, not just for themselves, but for the entire nation of Israel. Eli's failure to effectively address the sin in his household played a significant role in God's judgment. While he verbally rebuked his sons, his actions did not match his words. He failed to exercise his authority as a father and a high priest to discipline them and remove them from their positions of leadership. Eli's story serves as a sobering reminder that leadership, especially spiritual leadership, demands more than just words. To comprehend the gravity of Eli's situation, we must recognize that his sins were not isolated incidents, but stemmed from a deeper spiritual malaise. Eli's complacency wasn't merely about his son's actions, it reflected a gradual erosion of his own reverence for God. This spiritual decline is subtly yet powerfully illustrated in 1 Samuel 3, where God chooses to reveal himself to the young boy Samuel instead of Eli. This spiritual complacency, this gradual distancing from the fear and awe of God, formed the fertile ground where his son's rebellion could flourish unchecked. God, in his infinite mercy, did not remain silent as Eli's household slid deeper into sin. He sent a prophet, a man of God, to warn Eli of the impending judgment. The prophet pronounced a scathing indictment against Eli's family, declaring that God would bring an end to their priestly line. The prophet's message was a final plea for repentance, a desperate attempt to awaken Eli and his family from their spiritual slumber. God's judgment on Eli's household wasn't a display of capricious anger, but a measured response to persistent, unrepentant sin. It underscores a vital truth. God is holy, and his holiness demands reverence and obedience. When we, like Eli and his sons, choose to disregard his laws and dishonor his name, we invite his righteous judgment into our lives. This event serves as a stark reminder that our actions have consequences, not just for ourselves, but for those around us. The story of Eli's house goes beyond a historical account of judgment. It unveils a fundamental principle woven throughout the fabric of scripture, the paramount importance of upholding God's holiness. God, in his infinite purity and perfection, cannot tolerate sin. When we, like Eli's sons, treat the things of God with contempt, we not only disobey his commands, but we also disrespect his very essence. This narrative serves as a stark reminder that upholding God's holiness is not optional for those who claim to follow him. The Bible, though penned centuries ago, speaks directly to our lives today. The story of Eli's household, while rooted in a specific historical context, offers timeless lessons that transcend time and culture. 
One crucial lesson we glean from Eli's narrative is the importance of recognizing and addressing sin in our midst. Another vital lesson centers on the danger of spiritual apathy. The narrative of Eli's downfall doesn't begin with a dramatic act of rebellion, but with a subtle erosion of spiritual fervor. Eli, the high priest, entrusted with the sacred duty of leading God's people, had become complacent. This spiritual lethargy is evident in his lukewarm response to his son's blatant sin. The story of Eli stands as a stark warning. Spiritual apathy is not benign neglect. It's a slippery slope that can lead to spiritual ruin. The story of Eli, though ancient, holds a mirror to our modern lives. We might not be priests serving in a physical tabernacle, but each of us, as followers of Christ, has been entrusted with a sacred calling. Just as Eli's position didn't exempt him from the consequences of complacency, our identity as Christians doesn't make us immune to the dangers of spiritual apathy. It's a call to examine our hearts, to root out any hint of complacency, and to live each day with an unwavering passion for His glory. Eli's failure to address the sin within his family serves as a poignant reminder of the importance of cultivating godly households. Our homes should be havens of righteousness, places where God is honored, His word is cherished, and His presence is felt in every corner. This commitment to creating God-centered homes begins with us, the parents. We are called to be the spiritual leaders of our families, modeling a life of faith for our children and creating an environment where they can encounter God's love and truth. This doesn't mean we need to be perfect or have all the answers. It does mean being honest about our own struggles, seeking God's wisdom in raising our children, and creating space for open communication about spiritual matters. It means establishing family traditions that prioritize God regular times of prayer, Bible reading, and discussions about faith. It means making church attendance a non-negotiable, surrounding our families with other believers who can encourage and support us on our spiritual journey. Creating a God-honoring home isn't about legalistic rules. It's about cultivating an atmosphere where God is loved, His Word is revered, and His presence is the foundation upon which our families are built. One of the most heartbreaking aspects of Eli's story is his failure to effectively discipline his sons. While he offered verbal rebukes, he didn't take the necessary actions to confront their sin and hold them accountable for their actions. This failure to discipline stemmed from a misplaced sense of love, a desire to protect his sons from discomfort, even at the cost of their spiritual well-being. As parents, as mentors, as spiritual leaders, we must remember that true love isn't about shielding those we care about from the consequences of their sin. True love is about pointing them back to the cross, reminding them of God's boundless grace and mercy, and helping them walk in the freedom that comes from obedience. Discipline, though often unpleasant, is a necessary expression of love. It's about setting boundaries, establishing consequences for sinful behavior, and guiding our loved ones towards righteousness. It's about saying no even when it's hard, knowing that sometimes the most loving thing we can do is to allow those we care about to experience the natural consequences of their actions. This principle of loving discipline extends beyond the realm of parenting. As members of the body of Christ, we have a responsibility to hold one another accountable, to speak the truth in love, and to gently guide each other back to God's path when we stray. Section 4. Cultivating Spiritual Vigilance Perhaps the most sobering lesson from Eli's story is the insidious nature of spiritual apathy. It often creeps in unnoticed, a gradual dulling of our spiritual senses, a slow decline in our passion for God. We become comfortable, complacent, content with a lukewarm faith that barely resembles the vibrant, life-altering relationship we were called to. The antidote to this spiritual lethargy is vigilance. We must guard our hearts diligently, constantly evaluating our affections and ensuring that our love for God remains the driving force behind all that we do. This vigilance involves cultivating spiritual disciplines that keep us connected to the source of our strength. Regular prayer, deep engagement with scripture, and active participation in a local church are not just religious duties, they are lifelines, providing us with the nourishment and support we need to thrive in our faith. 
It also involves surrounding ourselves with other believers who can challenge and encourage us in our walk with God. We need friends who will speak truth into our lives, who will call us out when we're drifting, and who will point us back to Christ when we stray. The story of Eli is a stark reminder that our spiritual journey is not a passive endeavor. It requires intentionality, discipline, and a constant awareness of the spiritual battles raging around us. Let us stay alert, stay engaged, and stay fiercely devoted to the one who calls us to a life of purpose and passion. Section 1. Safeguarding Our Hearts As we reflect on the tragic downfall of Eli's household, the question arises, how can we, as believers today, prevent a similar fate from befalling us? The answer lies in understanding a profound truth. Our outward actions are a reflection of the condition of our hearts. Just as a tree bears fruit according to its kind, so too do our lives bear witness to the state of our inner being. Proverbs 4 verse 23 reminds us, Keep your heart with all vigilance, for from it flow the springs of life. This means we must be diligent in guarding our hearts against the insidious creep of sin, the subtle temptations that can so easily entangle us. We must be ruthless in identifying and rooting out any attitudes, desires, or behaviors that contradict God's word and his design for our lives. This process of heart examination requires honesty, humility, and a willingness to allow the Holy Spirit to search the deepest recesses of our being. We must be willing to ask ourselves tough questions. What are the idols that compete for my affection? What are the areas of my life where I'm tempted to compromise with the world's standards? Am I harboring any bitterness, resentment, or unforgiveness that hinders my relationship with God? Safeguarding our hearts is an ongoing process, a daily battle against the world, the flesh, and the devil. But it is a battle worth fighting, for the purity of our hearts determines the course of our lives. Section 2. The Power of Accountability one of the most effective ways to guard our hearts against spiritual complacency and the allure of sin is to embrace the power of accountability. We were not created to live in isolation, but to walk alongside fellow believers who can encourage us, challenge us, and help us stay true to our commitment to Christ. Hebrews 3 verse 13 exhorts us, but exhort one another every day, as long as it is called today, that none of you may be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. This means we need to be actively involved in a local church, surrounded by brothers and sisters in Christ who know us, love us, and are committed to our spiritual growth. Find a few trusted individuals, perhaps a mentor, a small group or close friends, and invite them into your life. Share your struggles, your temptations, and your victories with them. Ask them to pray for you, to hold you accountable to God's word, and to speak truth into your life when you need it most. Accountability isn't about judgment or condemnation, it's about love. It's about creating a safe space where we can be honest about our weaknesses, receive support and encouragement, and spur one another on towards greater Christ-likeness. Section 3. Raising a Godly Generation Eli's failure as a father holds a sobering lesson for parents today. The responsibility of raising children in the nurture and admonition of the Lord is a sacred calling, one that demands our utmost attention intentionality, and reliance on God's grace. Our children are not just our biological offspring. They are gifts entrusted to us by God, precious souls for whom we will one day give an account. Deuteronomy 6, 6 through 7 instructs us, And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children, and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise. This means that faith should not be relegated to Sunday mornings or bedtime prayers. It should permeate every aspect of our family life. Create a home where God is honored, where his word is read and discussed openly, and where prayer is as natural as breathing. Be intentional about discipling your children, teaching them God's truths, modeling a life of faith, and answering their questions with honesty and age-appropriate explanations. Remember that our children are watching us. They learn more from our actions than our words. Let us strive to live lives that reflect the love, grace, and truth of Christ, so that our children will see in us a faith worth emulating. Section 4. A Legacy of Righteousness The story of Eli's household is ultimately a story of squandered potential. Eli, the high priest, had the opportunity to leave a legacy of faithfulness, 
to raise his sons to honor God and serve his people with integrity. But his complacency, his failure to confront sin and uphold God's standards, resulted in a legacy of judgment and sorrow. As believers, we are called to leave a different kind of legacy, a legacy of righteousness, of unwavering devotion to God, and of lives that point others to the hope and transforming power of the gospel. This legacy is not built on our own strength or accomplishments, but on the unshakable foundation of God's grace. It's a legacy built through faithfulness in the small things, through daily acts of obedience, through courageous stands for truth, and through a relentless pursuit of holiness. It's a legacy built by investing in the lives of others, by sharing the love of Christ with a world desperately in need of his hope. May we learn from the mistakes of those who have gone before us and strive to live lives that bring glory to God, that leave a lasting impact for eternity, and that inspire generations to come to follow in the footsteps of our faithful Savior. Section 1. The High Cost of Apathy The fall of Eli's household stands as a stark monument to the devastating consequences of unchecked sin and spiritual apathy. It reminds us that God's blessings are not unconditional. They are intimately tied to our obedience and our willingness to honor Him with our lives. The narrative challenges us to look beyond the surface and confront the subtle ways complacency can creep into our own hearts and homes. Eli's story highlights the danger of allowing our roles, whether as parents, leaders, or simply followers of Christ, to become mere routines devoid of genuine love for God. When we lose sight of His holiness, when our hearts grow numb to the gravity of sin, we pave the way for spiritual decay, not just in our own lives but also in those entrusted to our care. This narrative is not a condemnation but a call to vigilance. It compels us to examine our own hearts, to root out any hint of complacency, and to fan the flames of our first love for Christ. It reminds us that our walk with God demands constant attention, a daily surrender to His transforming power, and an unwavering commitment to reflecting His holiness in a world shrouded in darkness. Section 2, Our Response, A Call to Action Friends, the story of Eli's household is not just an ancient tale, it's a potent reminder of the choices we face each day. Will we, like Eli, succumb to the seductive lull of complacency, allowing sin to fester and our love for God to grow cold? Or will we choose the path of vigilance, actively cultivating hearts ablaze with passion for God and lives marked by radical obedience to His Word? Let this narrative serve as a catalyst for spiritual renewal in our own lives. Let us commit to guarding our hearts with diligence, surrounding ourselves with godly counsel, and raising a generation that treasures God's Word and reflects His love to a world in desperate need of His grace. If this message has resonated with you, we encourage you to share it with others. Use the comment section below to share your thoughts, your struggles, and your commitment to living a life that honors God. Let's spur one another on towards greater Christ-likeness, building each other up in love and truth. And as always, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you never miss a video from Set Apart for Purpose. Until next time, may God bless you and keep you.